Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and you can probably tell from the sound of my voice that I have a cold, uh, but that is not going to keep me from bringing you guys a new YouTube video today. Uh, this is episode 39, and in this episode, I am going to show you guys how to use the MIDI modifier plugin, which is another one of the um, new MIDI effects plugins included with Logic 10. The MIDI modifier uh, allows you to modify and convert um, one control value to another control value. Um, so you, what you have is an input event and then a reassigned event. So what you can do is you, instead of, you know, for instance, instead of modulation wheel controlling something, you can have velocity control what modulation wheel was previously uh, controlling. Um, so that's the way this works. Now, most of the control values are, are MIDI, um, continuous controllers, or CCs, also known as control changes. Um, and when you click on one of these menus here, you'll see a list of all of the control values that we can uh, convert. So there's typical things like uh, note number, velocity, aftertouch, pitch bend, but then all of the ones that have numbers next to them, these are our uh, MIDI control change messages. And there's 128 control change messages, and these are often referred to as continuous controllers. So if you're not familiar with continuous controllers, you might want to go check out episodes 29 and 30, where I explain those in a bit more detail. But in short, your continuous controllers um, are things like your modulation wheel, faders, knobs, sustain pedal, breath control, things like that. Um, so uh, those are all uh, assignable here in the, the uh, MIDI modifier uh, plugin window. So let me give you a practical example. Um, right now, the synthesizer I have up is the ES2, and it currently has a modulation effect where the, the, an LFO is controlling a cutoff, the cutoff frequency of my filter, creating a, fil a slow filter sweep, and then the amount of that filter sweep is controlled by the modulation wheel. Simultaneously, I have another LFO controlling volume or amplifier or amplitude, um, and the modulation wheel is also controlling the amount of this. So when I have the modulation wheel all the way down, I play a chord. We just get a very basic stock sound. If I push the modulation wheel up, watch what happens. we get this sort of pulsing motion. So the MIDI modifier is an easy way without having to alter your synthesizer settings. It's an easy way to convert that modulation wheel to something else on the keyboard. Like maybe I want one of my faders to control this or maybe I want one of my knobs to control this instead of the modulation wheel. Let's actually start with just the default setting right here. Uh, the input event is going to be the new control that you want to control in this case, the modulation wheel. So instead of modulation wheel controlling that effect, uh, I want velocity to control that effect. Now, um, all of our continuous controllers and most of our MIDI messages, including velocity, uh, are have values from zero to 127. So basically, when I push the modulation wheel all the way up, that was 127, all the way down was zero. With velocity, the harder, the faster you hit the key, the more towards 127 it is. The softer, the slower you hit the key, the more towards zero it is. So the values, the actual numerical values are very easy to, uh, to convert from one controller to another. Um, the one thing we wanna make sure, at least for now that we do, is we wanna make sure that the scale is set to 100%, not 200%, so just option click on it, sets it to 100%, because that means that you know, a modulation wheel value of 100 is, is going, going to be the same as a velocity value of 100. If I had that at 200, it's going to over-exaggerate uh, those values. So I'm going to set the scale to 100%. So now what should happen is instead of the modulation wheel controlling this effect, um, velocity should control the effect. So if I hit the keys hard or, or fast, I should hear more of the sweep and then if, uh, that pulsing effect. And if I hit the key softer, I should hear less of the effect. So if I'm gonna hit, a, I'll hit them real hard here. Or maybe I'll hit them a little softer. So 
So that's just converting um, velocity to modulation wheel. Um, if you turn through on, what it does is it essentially uh, sends the message to both of these so you can control it with either of them. So that's what that does. Um, let's try something else. Let's try uh, maybe one of my faders or one of my knobs. Um, instead of velocity, I want to maybe use this second fader here to control the, uh, the, the what was my modulation wheel effect. Um, all you have to do is you click on this top menu, go up to learn, because we don't really, I don't really know offhand what CC number uh, my second fader is, but that's what this learn option does. It allows you to learn uh, and map any continuous controller on your MIDI controller. So I'll click on learn, and then I'll just move that fader. And sure enough, that fader is uh, CC22. So now when I push this up or down, it's gonna control the filter sweep, not the modulation wheel. We can, also, we can also do this with our encoders, our knobs. So again, I'll just go back up to learn. Move one of my knobs over here. This is CC75. go. Uh, another one we can use is aftertouch. Uh, I explained in the previous video that aftertouch is when you play a key and then you like can press down harder on the key. Not all keyboards have this, mine uh, does. So let's say input event aftertouch and we're going to convert aftertouch to modulation wheel. So now when I play uh, down the key harder uh, we're going to hear more of that effect. So if I play, so uh, if I play, play the chord and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more pressure on the key after I press the key. You know, it's a bit difficult to see in the video, but I'm, again, I'm playing the chord and then I'm pressing down on the keys harder to engage that aftertouch. Um, one of the things we can do here with aftertouch is since it's so sensitive, you know, it's very difficult to get all of the values, all of your aftertouch values, because aftertouch is 0 to 127 as well. Um, what you can do is you can roll down the scale of this, and the effect will have less of an effect. So if I uh, press down uh, harder if I uh, to engage aftertouch, we're not going to hear quite as much of, of the pulsing effect as we would um, uh, had I put this at 100%. So it's a bit of a softer effect. And if I pull it all the way up, it's really going to over-exaggerate it. With the scale at 200, I barely have to even press um, harder on the keys to, um, to get the full uh, pulsing effect. Now what add does is it basically just adds um, a MIDI data byte value or subtracts a MIDI data byte value from um, uh, from the control. So, I mean, if you push this up, it'll be, the, like, the, the effect will be more exaggerated. If you push it down, it'll be starting at a lower value, and it'll, it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be less present. So it's like a, like a fixed way to add or subtract MIDI data byte values. Again, that 0 to 127 range that we were talking about before. So if I push this up a bit here... We're already starting at a value of 55, which means that even if I press the keys without pressing down harder to engage aftertouch, we're already getting a little bit of that pulsing effect. Because we're already starting almost halfway up the 0 to 127 range. Um, another thing we can do here that's quite useful is instead of uh, just instead of modifying, uh, instead of you know converting uh, one control to another, we can actually uh, turn off a control. Uh, I know it doesn't seem that useful, but 
In my case, I have this fader over here. It's my very last fader. Um, I don't know what's happened. I maybe I've spilt coffee on it or something or, you know, spilt stuff on it. Or it's dirty. But from time to time, this fader will send um, unintentional or not messages that I didn't uh, intend for it to send. And sometimes it can get a little screwy where it's, you know, it starts messing with my volume control um, and I didn't even touch the fader. So one of the things you can do is you can turn off one of the faders on your MIDI controller, uh, but keep in mind that only works for just that one track. You know, you'd have to put the modifier on all of your instrument tracks in order to uh, completely turn that just that one fader off. Uh, and I, I think that I explained this previously in the, um, the MIDI input filter video uh, where I turned off all of my continuous controllers, but uh, I don't want to do that. I just want to turn that one off so I can still use the other ones. So the way you do this is uh, you have to assign the control that you want to bypass in both the input and the reassign uh, menus. So what I'm going to do is go to learn, I'm going to move it, and then go to the next one, go to learn, and move that as well. Um, and then all you have to do is make sure that add is at zero, and then scale is at zero. And basically what this means uh, is that you are... When your scale is at zero, the uh, controller is having no effect whatsoever. So it doesn't matter whether I push it up or down, it has a zero scale, so nothing's going to happen. There's not going to be any motion on that particular fader. So it's a way to kind of bypass uh, bypass a fader, bypass a continuous controller. Uh, in my case, like I said, it's damaged or it's dirty or something, and it, it, it's sending false messages from time to time. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks again for watching.